talk about ahimsa. This is the very first yama from the yogic framework for understanding how to live our lives. And I want to kind of build the context around this because for some people who aren't familiar with yoga, um, in particular the Yoga Sutras, which is a document from about 2,500 years ago, it essentially just outlines how consciousness works. And it outlines the natural observances or natural observations of a human being who is living in harmony with reality. And we can see examples of yogis through many great religions and different mystical and spiritual traditions. We have a countless number of sages and saints and great teachers and masters of all different traditions who are carrying the same or a very, very similar message. And so I personally like the Yoga Sutras uh, merely for the fact that it's very scientific. It's non-dogmatic. Non it's very straightforward and it just helps understand how the human being operates. And so that's just to give some context around this topic of ahimsa. And I'll make this video short because I intend to post it on Instagram. But, and there'll be future videos with me explaining more, but this ahimsa principle, a uh, meaning not, himsa violent. So the very first yogic principle on how to achieve union with life, yoga meaning union, is non-violence, ahimsa, not violent. And when we understand that violence doesn't start out there, it starts in here with our thoughts, we can start to, or rather I should say, we can stop enabling violence. That's key. So this topic that I pose the question to you all, where am I still enabling violence in my life? Where am I still um, dominating my body, using my mind as the oppressor of this? Where am I doing that in my life? And what can I do about that? It's a better question. What can I do daily as a consistent habit, right? Just like we brush our teeth daily, what is a spiritual hygiene that I can adopt to cleanse myself of my own violence, right? Because this violence that we inflict on ourselves through thinking I'm not good enough, I can never do that, not listening to my own needs, is a form of a subtle form of violence. Remember, there's many forms and subtler and subtler layers of this. And then it appears out there to show us, hey, wake up, wake up in there, listen, become sensitive to the life that's arising in you, and you will stop being violent with yourself. Because this is all coming out, this, this topic that I'm specifically sharing on is very relevant to the time we're in. And it's because what happened? One human being inflicted an extreme act of violence on another human being, and that was, uh, that brought a tremendous amount of collective trauma to the surface for everybody to look at. And it's now it's coming very close to home and it's triggering a, a lot of deep things in us. Deep ancestral healing needs to take place. How does that healing take place? How is it supposed to take place? We have to stop being violent with ourselves. We have to stop oppressing these things in us that are begging to come out and breathe and be heard. Right? And it stops. Um, we need to look at how doing that in our own system daily will stop us from fighting what's out here and stops us from fighting with each other because we all want the same thing. We all want peace. We all want to feel connected to each other. But sometimes separating and tuning ourselves and going in and healing our work before we come back together is necessary. Right? Sometimes if we're, if we're too out of tune, 
and we can't see each other, we can't hear each other, there's dissonance. And because there's dissonance, there's no coherence between us and we can't actually, uh, we can't heal anything because we can't see each other. We don't see our own wholeness in our brother or our sister. And we're, we're separating and then, yeah, and then violence is inflicted. So ahimsa, where am I enabling violence in my own system subtly, right? And if I do have a yoga practice or a physical practice with my body, is there anywhere that I'm dominating my body and I'm forcing it to do things that it doesn't really want to do? Is there anywhere that I'm not truly with my breath as I move and I'm not sensitive to the life that's in me? Anywhere where we're desensitized to life, we're inflicting a subtle act of violence because we're separating ourselves from it. And if we come back into being connected to life, to not being violent, things will change. Things will change. And it starts with us. It starts with a daily intention to practice and align ourselves with this. This is the temple. You don't need to go anywhere to get to the temple. In fact, you don't need to listen to anyone tell you what your truth is. You're a good person and you're doing a good job and you know that you're trying your best to keep doing a good job. I believe that's true for all of us because we all want the same thing. I believe that's also true. So how do we get to that? It starts inside. It starts with us going in and examining how to heal. What needs the healing? Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for helping me in this endeavor. I bless you all. Really, really. I see you all doing this work and I'm really just grateful to be sharing these words with you. Namaste, friends.